Alright, I'm going to show you how to use the Octosolve software package to do some automated analysis of a slug test um, done here in the Clemson well field. So Octosolve is a great software package for designing and analyzing both slug and pumping test data. So you can download a free trial um, at octosolve.com. This is not going to allow you to save your data, but you can still um, do all the analyses um, and, and, uh, and estimate the parameters of your aquifer. So analysis of well testing data generally uses some sort of type curve matching to estimate the aquifer parameters. So what this means is we have an idealized solution for the hydraulic head as a function of time or distance. And this has been determined by solving the necessary differential equations uh, based on the boundary conditions um, that are assumed uh, for the aquifer and the test. So these solutions incorporate varying levels of complexity or different uh, aquifer s uh, scenarios in those boundary conditions. So things like unconfined or confined aquifers, fully or partially penetrating wells, um, accounting for uh, filter packs around wells, and so on. So by tweaking the aquifer parameters in that idealized model, you can adjust the shape of the type curve until it matches your test data. <coughs> so our Vorslev and Bauer and Rice analyses are set up so that the type curve appears as a straight line on a semi-log plot. Um, so not all analyses end up being this straightforward, however. So essentially, Octosolve software performs automated type curve fitting. Um, it does this by, by adjusting the parameters um, of the aquifer until you get a nice fit. So the way uh, we need to do this is we'll bring in um, the geometry of the well and the aquifer. We'll bring in our, our test observations. We'll select a solution and then fit the type curve to our data. So to demonstrate, I'm going to use data from a slug test uh, performed in well LBR1. Um, here's a schematic of that well here. This is in the lower well field near the Campbell Geology Museum. It's a six inch diameter well. It has a casing depth to uh, about 33 meters. Um, and beneath that is just an open borehole in the fractured bedrock. Um, so it has a total depth of 91.5 meters, which is about 192 feet. Um, on the day of the testing, our initial depth to water was about 18 feet below the ground surface. So using the, uh, the slug test data sheets, I've already performed the analysis for the Borslev and the Bauer and Rice. Um, you can see here on my plot, <coughs> I've plotted the, uh, the normalized head on a log scale versus time on a linear scale. I have visually fit a line here favoring those earlier data. So I get my values for the T.37 and the T log for the Borslev and Bauer and Rice analyses. I use the parameters of the aquifer and the well to calculate the geometric factors and then I solve for the transmissivity and the conductivity using those data sheets. So I got um, about 1.9 times 10 to the negative fourth feet per minute and 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth feet per minute for my hydraulic conductivity in well LBR1. So now let's see um, how this works in Octosolve. <coughs> when you first open Octosolve, you'll probably get a, a tip window or a help window. You can go ahead and close it. What we need to do is go to File and say New. And this is going to let you set up uh, the type of analysis you want to do. So we need the slug test wizard. Right, so it helps you create a data set for a single well or multi-well slug test and import pressure transducer data. Um, so you may have pressure transducer data or you may have measured uh, the head during the test manually. Um, and those are the data that we're going to import. Um, for my test, these measurements were all made manually. So here my new data set, I'll say OK. And it welcomes you to the slug test wizard tells you, be prepared to supply the units, the aquifer data, well locations and construction details, and your water level observations. So we'll say next to begin. So here we can set up the length and time units of our test. Um, so our spatial and our temporal units. If we were doing a pumping test, we could specify the units of the pumping rate. And it also gives you an option for the units to report for your hydraulic conductivity. Um, I'll just keep mine consistent with my inputs, which are feet for length and minutes for time. So I'll say next. Here you can enter project information. Um, Octosolve in the full version is able to produce very nice reports and figures um, that would 
that might list your company or the client or the project and other information into them. And you can still generate those reports and figures in the free version, but you can't save them or export them. Um, so I've entered some information here, but I'll go ahead and say next. For step three, I need to enter H0 or the observed initial displacement and also the static water column height. So H0 in my test was 0.45 feet. My static water column height was 174.06 feet. So I enter those here. You can enter the name of the well. This is going to show up on the plot that we'll look at in a minute. LBR1. You can also enter the coordinates of your well. Uh, this is important in multi-well tests because the solutions often take into account the radius uh, between wells. So here you can either enter something like the UTM coordinates or um, the distance from some arbitrary datum. Because I'm only considering a single well, this is less important. and I'll leave these as 0, 0. Next we'll list the, the parameters of the aquifer. So B, or the saturated thickness of the aquifer, here is, I'm assuming, the same as my um, static water column height, 174.06 feet. You can also specify a vertical to horizontal hydro hydraulic conductivity and isotropy ratio. Uh, because we're really only considering the horizontal hydraulic conductivity, we can leave this as one, sort of ignore it for now. We'll say next. So now we'll set up the construction details of the well. Um, D, the depth of the top of the well screen uh, from the ground surface or the depth of the open interval. This is the same as the casing length uh, for my well, which was 108.07 feet. Oops. So L is the length of the well screen or that open interval, which in my well was 192 feet. Uh, you can also um, put the depth of your transducer if you're using it. Um, here uh, we don't have any so we'll just leave this as zero. We'll say next. So now it's looking for some radius data for the well itself. Um, the values we need to supply are RC, the inside radius of the well casing, which I'm assuming in this case is equal to the, the radius of the well itself. It's a six inch well, so the inside radius of my well casing is 0.25 feet. And then I also need to set the radius of the well itself, or the open or perforated interval. And I'm going to assume this is the same as um, the radius of my well casing, or 0.25 feet. Notice you can also um, specify the radii of downhole equipment, packers, or the well skin. Um, but we'll just ignore those for now, and we'll say next. Um, here are corrections you could apply for your data. We're not going to use any of these corrections. We'll just uh, leave our data as is, and we'll say next. And so here is where we enter our observations. So this might be our pressure transducer data, or our water level measurements. So it tells you enter time as elapsed time since initiation of the test and enter displacement as change in water level from static. Right, so we'll don't enter your depth to water, enter the head or the change in head um, during the test. What we can do is we can actually copy and paste directly from Excel into Octosolve um, to, to put in these time and displacement measurements. It's a bit picky. It requires you to have your time and displacement measurements uh, measurements in adjacent columns when you copy it. So I've copied my information from here down to here. I'll select um, these values, copy, and then I'll say paste. And it brings them in <coughs> into Octosol. Notice my first row here is empty. Um, it sort of does this by default. You can delete the row if you like, or you can just leave it empty. It doesn't affect the analysis in any way. Notice the third column here is a weight. So this is a, a weight you can, uh, um, you can change for each observation. 
So if you want to weight a certain part of your data set, for instance, the earlier portion of your data set heavier than the later part of your data set, you could change those weights here. And I'll demonstrate that a bit later. I'm going to treat all my observations the same for now and leave that weight as one. And I'll say next. And this congratulates me on finishing the wizard. And it tells you the next steps we need to do. So we can add wells or modify the data set from the edit menu. Um, we'll identify appropriate models or we'll plot our data using the view menu. Once we've um, taken a look at our data, we can choose a solution um, and perform the curve matching using this match menu. Um, and it tells us we should perform visual um, curve fitting prior to the automatic curve matching to refine the starting estimates. And oftentimes, especially with these straight line methods, we can get um, uh, a better fit of our line visually than automatically because we can just uh, await our data um, visually instead of going in and changing that. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that as well a bit later. But for now, I'll say finish. Um, this window will open, um, and it automatically reads through your data set, checking for errors or missing parameters. Um, it hasn't detected any errors, which is good. So let's plot our data next. So from our view menu, what we want to look at is displacement uh, versus time. And I'll maximize this window so you see we have the name of our well, LBR1. And this has chosen to plot this displacement with a linear scale and time on a log scale. We need to switch those axes and look at displacement on the log scale and time on a linear scale. So I'll say view and switch from log linear to linear log. Okay. So now we have this on a log scale. Um, for the displacement, we can see our data falling near a straight line. We can also normalize this vertical axis. So I'll go to view and I'll say options. And here we can um, determine what we want to display, but I'll also select this normalized head, right, H over H0. Say apply. So now our, our normalized head values start at 1 at the beginning of the test. And we'll say OK. So this looks pretty good. Um, our next step now is we can um, do our visual curve matching, but then we need to select our solution. So first we're going to go to this match menu and say match the solution. And here's our solution window. Um, the default here is this checkbox, this checkbox that says the solution is inactive. If I click this, I can, I can activate um, the solutions here. So these are all the available solutions we have for our slug testing. Um, and you can expand any of these to look at um, the reference from the literature, whether it's a single or multi-well test, whether it considers things like the wellbore skin, uh, partially penetrating scenario, under or over damp solutions. Um, so you can get a, a better idea for uh, which uh, solution is most applicable um, for your test. Um, and some of these require different amounts of information than others. So what we're going to do is we're going to just use the Vorslev analysis from the confined aquifers um, to begin with. Right you, Here on the right you can also limit um, the solutions to choose from based on um, on some sort of filter. So we could also select this to, to limit this just to straight line methods. So you can see here in confined aquifers we have our Vorslev and our Bauer and Rice analysis. So we'll go ahead and say Vorslev um, and say OK and then a line is added to our plot. Um, so this is the, my straight line type curve for the Vorslev solution. So our next step is we can modify this, this type curve or we can fit it manually. So here with this arrow button you can see it says match visual or you can also say match visual from this um, this drop down menu. Uh, once you've selected that you can click somewhere on your plot and drag to draw in a line. And you can see as I move this line around you can see how the hydraulic connectivity value changes. 
So here I can do a, a visual matching or fitting of my data. And I can see here my hydraulic conductivity is 0 0.0001908, which is what I had originally. Right, so I can see I'm fitting the data very nicely at these earlier times um, and, and weighting my, my visual solution to those points. So now let's see how the automated curve matching works. If I go to match and say automatic, I get this dialog box which opens. Um, and there are a number of tabs here. The first one is the estimation tab. This lets you specify the maximum number of iterations to perform. So what this, um, this automatic matching is doing is it's going to have some starting value of, in this case, the hydraulic conductivity. And then it's going, to, um, it's going to use that to fit a line to your data and, and then measure the error between the, the predicted um, head as a function of time and your observations. Um, mm -hmm. And so this, this tool is going to try and minimize that error by adjusting the hydraulic conductivity um, value. And so it um, does this in an iterative sense. I can set my maximum. I'll leave this at 25. You can also change the convergence criteria or um, sort of the maximum amount of change between any two iterations to consider it a converged solution. You can also set uh, boundaries on the parameters themselves. Right, so here's sort of a, a starting value um, that the solver would use. You can set the minimum and maximum um, to, to some, some values using this dialog. If you're doing a multi-well test, you can also turn on and off um, active wells. We only have this well, LBR1, so we'll just leave that the way it is. And I'm going to accept the defaults for the automated matching. Okay, so my next step is to click Estimate to perform the automatic estimation. I do so, and it tells me that my solution was able to converge in six iterations. And I'll say OK, and I can see from iteration to iteration how much my solution changed. Um, so it's very small towards the end, and it converged on a value. And I'll say Close and OK. And I can see that value is very similar to, um, to my initial estimate, right? I get 0 0.0001708. So we have, between my estimate, 1.9, this estimate, 1.7 times 10 to the negative 4th, uh, about a 10% change between the two values. Okay. So that's how we can do automated um, fitting of our slug test data.